Now today I'm going to do a uh, summer scene full of the, the green foliage, of the dark green trees and the, um, the crops on the uh, fields. It's a scene just down the road from where I live. There's a big Suffolk oak, very, very dense dark green, and then the rolling fields um, full of green and yellowy crops. I've already sketched it out. It's on a piece of Bockingford 200 pound knot paper, a half imperial, 15 inches by 22 inches painting. Right, well, we'll start the, the painting now. I, I should say incidentally that if you want the, the list of all of the colors, there'll be a, um, a, a photograph of the palette with the named colors at the end of this um, video. And I should say that I always use tube paint rather than the pans. That's because the tube paint is much more versatile. You can go from mixing up a nice dilute wash um, or having paint almost the consistency of toothpaste very quickly, whereas pans you're tending to scrub away. Um, and apart from wearing the brush, it takes ages to get a good rich dark. Right, now have a vision of what you want the picture to look like. It's important to have some sort of vision. Um, otherwise, how will you know when you've got there? Um, now, when I start the sky, and this is a, uh, a sky first job, um, a bit of ultramarine, cobalt, and a little bit of light red. When you start, start at the top, and I'll work down, and I just change the colour as as I come to it. So that's the first bit, bit of light, bit of light red and dirty raw sienna and a tiny bit of cobalt. A lighter cloud there. Just join them up a little bit back to the blue. And a lighter cloud here and a little bit more blue in that corner. Um, ultramarine with a little bit of raw, sorry, burnt umber. Seems strange having an earth colour in the sky, but you must remember that skies, clouds are made of water vapour and water reflects the colour of the ground. And it's a case of if you find the world you seek. If you look for it, you can sort of see it. Keep moving the brush in a nice sort of lively way. So we come down. So finish each area as well as you can so that you don't risk having to go back to it. Str slightly stronger bit of colour just at the bottom here. Dry brush. Catch these before they dry out. If you go back when there's sort of a certain level of dampness, then you risk having bleed backs and all sorts of ugly marks. Um, it's not the colour which is difficult to control, it's the water. Now, as the clouds get nearer to the Horizon, then obviously because of, of perspective, get a little bit smaller. Link them, not only vertically but horizontally as well. Um, give the brush a good rinse and occasionally a shake in between times so that you don't keep getting more and more water on the brush. Now, in fact, the clouds can be a little bit darker behind trees, and that's because when you look through the what they call the sky holes or the holes to, in the trees where the birds fly through, as they say, um, the sort of tracery of, of uh, small branches reduces the light, and the, the sky appears to be just that little bit darker. Take the, tree, the sky right down to the horizon, over the tree. If there had been a building there, I'd have gone around it with a tree. 
you don't want sort of a white halo uh, left around the tree. It separates it and it doesn't look as if it's enveloped in the atmosphere. <coughs> now when we've got to that stage we'll just take up one or two of these little drips so that they don't start to work their way upwards. And we can also just take a little bit of dry, just a damp brush, just fuzz up some of these little white areas. But don't, don't go back, don't go back with a wet brush or a dry brush or a tissue with a, um, wrapped around your finger to start dabbing at it. That's why it's important to do each area as well as you can and then move on and don't go back. Now once we've got to that stage, rather than pausing, we can just take a slightly smaller brush and start to indicate some of the, the fields in the distance. A bit of raw sienna and a bit of burnt sienna, tiny bit of cobalt just to take the edge off the warmth. And we can sweep this. Again, I'll try and practice touch each area of the paper once if you can to minimise the overpainting. And uh, so I'll go over that. Uh, then Oriolan, yellow, and a bit of Viridian and some raw sienna. You can see the big advantage of the tubes as you dig into it and you get the wash immediately. It's no good having tubes and then squeezing them out and uh, letting them dry. You might as well just use pans. You need to have nice soft guppy paint that you can dig your brush into. We'll just put that bush in here. Um, so some Viridian, some Burnt Sienna. That'll nicely sort of join on to that. that fairly solid. Let's have a little bit of Raw Sienna and Burnt Sienna now. More yellow. Not too fuzzy. Sort of have a fuzzy edge um, so it doesn't attract the eye. That's a nice little full stop there on the right left hand side of the picture to stop the, uh, the viewer going out. You see the sky's pretty well dry. Might fuzz up a bit but that doesn't matter. Catch it while it's wet so that you um, can get those sort of nice soft edges. Right now we'll so I'll start to work from the, the background to the foreground and um, put this uh, large oak tree in here. Incidentally, slightly off centre to make a, a more interesting um, composition. The danger with the diagonals is that they can lead you into the picture but they can also lead you out. So you've got to make sure that it's a one-way ride and that's the direction of, of motion of the, the viewer's eye. Right, well let's start with the, the background. A lot of heavy green in, in the summer and that's always difficult to, to deal with. So I need to visually describe, because I'm not going to be there when everybody's looking at this picture to say, well that's further away than that. So anything I say has got to explain what's going on and I need to explain to the viewer that the distant trees on the skyline um, are further away than this hedge and then further away from this little uh, the sort of ditchy gap here. Um, in the, when you look at it in the, uh, in the reel they all look equally dark but there was a slight sense that they were they were uh, they glued in the heavy sort of summery atmosphere. Um, so a bit of ultramarine and light red, a little bit of raw sienna, and I should be able to get a bluey green, which I will vary as we go along. I'd rather it 
was an obvious colour. Um, so let's start here. I don't, I've got another bush there, which I'll put in now. Use a different brush um, just to keep that one. So raw sienna and viridian. Slightly darker as we get underneath here. You see those edges there are nice and soft so it joins onto the uh, the bush joins onto the, um, the background. So we'll come across here and I just occasionally will change that colour. That's a bit of very dilute raw umber. Let's have some cobalt now as we go into the it's just a sense that it's further away. And again I'd rather have a clear colour identity so it's clear that it's blue. Raw sienna, just a bit of warmth there. And then back to the original blue. Come up against this tree here and then round the other side. Don't choose that tree to change the colour. If you're going to change any colours, change them out in the open. If you change it as it disappears behind the tree, then it won't read as a continuous, that left hand side distance is a continuous, um, is joined on. Um, another slightly darker bush here, it's in the foreground, all nice and sort of blurred. Another way of indicating that it's all in the distance is to have some soft edges. Now the other thing I'm going to do is with a damp brush just join, soften the edge, the bottom edge of these bushes in various places, particularly around the this, because there's going to be some hard edges there so I can exaggerate the difference between the, the uh, edges and I'm, if that hasn't dried off too much I can soften that edge there and there, just gently does it. Um, uh, then another bush here, slightly lighter, with greens and they're always difficult so the, I think the, uh, the trick is to, to keep um, varying them. Burnt umber and viridian are a good combination to get a nice rich green. A little bit of burnt umber, some dark rich bushes here. I want it to look as if it's made of watercolour, that's the important thing. Even at the expense of being sort of accurate. And then this rather light green bush here, if you have your brush almost parallel to the surface you can just indicate Actually that might have that a little bit stronger. Get the drawing in first and then we can take up the branches, just the main ones to give it a structure, join it to the ground. Now there's very few hard edges, if any, other than where the tree is silhouetted in the sky for the eye sort of to get hold uh, for the eye to get hold of. So hopefully when I do this, this will be what anchors the, the viewer to the... Uh, and we have a little hedge running down here, this field. And again, they're, they're important because it's the hedges which give you the contour of the ground. Just soften the, the bottom edge again, just to link it to the... Uh, the ground or to what I've already got on the, the paper. Now let's join this. 
and a nice bush here. A little bit more brown than some of these just to relieve the monotony of all that green. More yellow now, stronger yellow, Oriolan, just to warm it up a bit. And it's thicker paint so it goes up into that. So it sort of go here. So if we break the skyline, that'll firmly put this um, hedge in front of the, the distance, even without the, um, in the same way that you see this one breaks the, uh, the skyline. Um, and it places it because it's more colour, less blue, and bigger, and a, perhaps a little bit more detail as well. And then I'll come down here. And while that's drying, let's put in a la the large wash for this field in the foreground. Raw sienna, oriolan, a little bit of cobalt really load the brush up and when you've got a large area like this start at the top don't start at the bottom and work up or in the middle start at the top and work down nice big strokes by all means vary the color slightly warmer there Bit more raw sienna and um, let's have a little bit more viridian now and oriolan if you place the brush hard on the paper so that the texture of the paper in a way pulls the paint off the brush and if you want that sparkle then you, know, you can get it like that if you go back you'll press the liquid paint into the crevices and valleys of the paper and it will just look like a, um, a single wash. Now it's the same as go for the sky, once you've got to the bottom stop, don't go mucking about with it over here otherwise you'll have water and running down and uh, you'll, um, you'll regret it. Right we'll just have a little bit of a clip stop and have a clear up, let that uh, dry out um, and then a few more marks and we'll be done. We want to make sure it's nice and fresh and simple. Don't push it so far that you start to lose that clean freshness, um, which is a, a sense of the uh, of the, uh, the summery day. Right now that's dried out, we can uh, have a look at this uh, dealing with this tree now because it's the the main focal point um, of this, although there are areas which I hope the, the viewer will sort of go to simply because of the change of the colour and of course there's one or two lines of hedges that automatically will lead them astray as it were. I need to make sure that they always come back to this. So darker, I can make people hopefully engineer the viewer to look in the right place it's not by what it is although it obviously is a major uh, form in this picture but the way I paint it and what will attract the viewer's attention will be more detail darker colour, richer colour, sharper edges, more contrast um, so let's see if we can uh, manage that now winds are blue and raw sienna, a little bit of oriolan. One of the characteristics, now these trees are fairly dense, but they are spherical, so the um, the top will just ca catches the light a little bit more than the uh, the rest of the, the tree might be a little bit too light so just go back and try a little bit more there. now winds are blue 
and burnt sienna, a little bit of aureolin to give me a dark green. Nice dark rich green. Keep going so I want this to all join onto that while it's still wet. I don't overdraw these trees simply because I end up sort of colouring them in. I want to um, be sort of move the brush in a free way. Um, let's have a little bit of ultramarine now, just a little bit of bluey colour, just to get a sense of blueness from the which I'm going to exaggerate, of the leaves behind the tree, or with the other side of the tree. A cool colour hopefully will go, will go back. Now let's start, go up to meet it now. This is the uh, bit of Iridium and burnt sienna with this mixture. Do these large branches keep going while it's still wet so it all, it all sort of joins on these individual leaves sort of hanging down here and obviously you don't um, paint every branch. It's really just the main significant ones. Very dark, so a little bit of burnt umber on this right hand side. Because what sun there is is coming from the left. So we keep that and I want to join that onto a shadow, but before I do, let's do the other side of the tree, which will be catching the light. So a little bit, a little bit lighter. And let's, I need to scrub away at that a little bit, just so that there is a, the tree is joined onto the, growing out of the ground rather than growing on on the ground. I don't want it to look like a sort of a toy tree on a railway, not a railway, but you could pick it up and sort of move it. I want it to join. So you join the light hand the light side there. Um, and then this dark darker side will be cast a bit of a shadow. I mean, there will be sort of shadows here as well, shadow across here. But very important to join the light and the shaded side. Just fill up those little white holes there. As we're looking across the field, it won't be a really marked shadow because we're looking at it so sort of obliquely. Um, Uh, there's sort of a ditch run along here and there's just one or two weeds and things growing out above the putting their heads up as it were um, a little bit of dry brush there just to vary the stroke um, Start with another green. Oriola and Viridian. Going up here, I'm scrubbing away so that it joins on there. Um, and then just occasionally soften the top edge. 
so that it's sort of lost and found. Um, we have a, as hard edges are here as we've got over here, um, then um, we can expect the viewer's eye to be taken um, away from our, well, from where we want them to look, essentially. Now a few other little marks, um, I might just scratch in one, just with my fingernail, thumbnail I should say, one little light um, trunk where the sun is catching it, and then it'll be Haven't done that very well, let's just have another go. Cobalt and burnt umber, just to give me a dark. Of course that is in front of these. Front of the distant bushes, so it immediately serves two purposes. It brings this tree forward. A bit of a shadow there, that's one like that. Um, it brings this tree forward and pushes those branches back. Just make the contour of that a little bit more interesting. Don't overdo that sort of scratchiness, otherwise, you and um, it looks like a trick. Um, Be careful, amateurs particularly like tricks and then they overuse them. It's got to be in the service of something. Now, I'll have a dark something here, bush here, and that shows up the, the light on that side of the. Um, a little bit more texture on the um, I'll just stop there and clean the palette a little bit of texture to make the foreground a little bit more solid to um, keep the you nice know, air to exaggerate really the airiness of the sky and then I think we'll be done Right, the final few strokes, always the, the hardest part really, just one or two little sort of dabs here. Um, uh, always the problem of uh, when is the picture finished. Um, far better to leave something for the viewer to do. Um, all I'm going to do is just do a little bit of over texturing on here to make this more solid and then um, we should uh, might put something on there but I can't decide that until I've done that um, but if I've got that clean sort of freshness of the watercolour um, medium then I've got to be very careful that I just don't go around painting everything twice uh, and then thinking well um, that that is better, except it's not as fresh, and uh, I wish I hadn't done it. Uh, better underdone than overdone. So one or two little marks here, just a light glaze essentially. Um, this is raw sienna and viridian. A bit more raw sienna as you can see, just to get a sense of These little, I'm just putting a bit of raw sienna in those white holes simply because they are too sparkly. Um, let's put a bit of cobalt and burnt sienna. For a variety, really. Nice light strokes so that you don't disturb the underneath wash. Um, more 
Viridian and with a bit of Oriolan and raw sienna this time. Make it slightly richer green too. Drive the viewer's attention up there. So just fill in those little marks there. And I will just glaze this field as a contrast to that to that one. And then I think it's time uh, to stop. Once you feel that you're getting with a whisker of the uh, vision you had, and there will always be a gap between the vision and its execution. Um, it's just a matter of closing the gap. Um, I think it's a good idea to, to stop painting. Um, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you found that helpful. Here are the colours I am currently using. Essentially, I have examples of the um, three primaries, the blues, the reds and the yellows. And this is something, if you are not very experienced, is worth getting used to and getting accustomed to your palette. Here are the bl four blues and they're arranged so that they get lighter as you go from this end to that end. In the same way that the reds go from a brown to a bright red and the yellows go from a dull yellow to a, well in fact, what is a, a dirty lemon. This is Windsor Blue Green, French Ultramarine, Cobalt Blue, Cerulean Blue, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Light Red, Cadmium Red, and now the yellows, Raw Umber, Raw Sienna, Oriolan Yellow, and Cadmium Lemon. I've got one or two odds and ends in here. Currently they are Alizarin Crimson, Viridian Green, Cobalt Violet, Payne's grey and there's a little bit of cadmium orange there.